Christ. It gives me a great pleasure as well as a privilege to come to you today. I'm your host and producer of God's Highways and Hedges. I thank God because <laughs> I've had everything to try to stop, stop me today. But when you're determined to follow Jesus, to walk into his way, his way, Isaiah 55, 8 say that his ways are higher than man's ways all the way from earth to heaven. And you know, as I've traveled along God's highways, I've found out that there is no way after 10 or 15 years, 20, 30, 40, <laughs> 50, Years, I found that there is no way any better than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For about 15 years, uh, 530 South Hackberry, I used to be out on the yard. I would come out and work with the community, the young people, the young adults. And as I'm saying, following in Jesus, walking in his footsteps, this is what I would start out with the scripture every day the 13th chapter of St. Matthew's, and it says, the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside. And I ask God to bless us this day, bless me this day, In the name of Jesus Christ, God's Son, bless this message, bless this studio, bless this city, bless these coordinators, bless the whole entire world today. There's so much trouble in the land. And one thing that I have noticed, it's all over the media. They're saying, oh, it's so hot, this heat, this heat, this heat. Well, I want to tell you what Jesus Christ is doing He's turning it up. And do you know that he can turn it up much higher? Higher. Higher than it is now. And he's just letting us get a taste of the heat. to see about our changing, the world changing their minds, because right now, they're just worried about the heat. They're not worried about 
living in the heat forever and an eternity. But that's what it's all about. My mechanic was supposed to come out Monday and work on my air condition, but he didn't come. But in that great getting up morning, that day that we will all stand before Jesus Christ, he is going to ask this question of every individual. Did you accept me when you were down there on the earth? Now that's what this 13th chapter of St. Matthew's is about. And this is what I did in my community. There were teenagers, boys and girls, and I would have them to read the 13th chapter of St. Matthew's. And it gives you a choice. You know, God is so good, he provides everything that we need for right now. We have to worry about a cool drink of water. There is nothing. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. He thought of everything. That good cold water every day. Praise God. Praise God. My family have treated me for a period of 30 years. <laughs> Every holiday, either Thanksgiving or Christmas, I go where the whole family is. Twice I went to, uh, on a cruise. And I asked, having three psychologists in my family and three engineers. So I am always happy to be with my family because uh, I can ask questions and get immediate answers. Praise God, praise God. In Jesus Christ's name. And I asked, I said, all of this water, when you're t on a cruise, you look out and you can't see nothing but water, 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 water. And sometimes as I have a, a bottle of water over with me when I came into the studio, and I, and I said, God, you fixed it where we can just have it so convenient that we can ha have the water in our homes, in our refrigerators, and, and, and just keep it cold. And some people in the grocery stores, they have six and seven cases of water that they're taking home to their families. Jesus Christ is our Father, God, our Lord, and our Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is a great, great, great provider. I hear people say, 
well, I don't deserve this. Uh, uh, I, 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 just, I, I shouldn't have all of this. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you, Jesus Christ is the best father, best provider in the world. Jesus Christ wants his children to have the best of everything. Why do you think we go to school to learn all of that great, great gifts that he has put in us? And we go to school and learn how to use it. Praise God. So it is our job as his servants, as his children, our Father in heaven, hallelujah, great God above, thank you for your great, great provisions. Hallelujah. And now, when I was reading the 13th chapter, the entire chapter of Matthews, you know, I was on a corner, Nevada and Hackberry. And you know what? People like the corners. The young people, they would love to come and sit around. Well, that was just great for me because that was my audience. And so I said, well, if you're going to sit here, I want you to read this chapter. Oh, sure, sure. Sister Wilson, we'll be glad to read it. And they would. The same day Jesus went out of the house and he sat by the seaside and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into the ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And you know, as I look back, um, all of that time, I was trying to follow Jesus. The same day, I'm talking about I stayed with chapter 13. You know why? And it said, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, his soul went forth to sow. And when he had sowed some seeds, fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devolved them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. Forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfolds, some sixty, and some thirtyfolds. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And you know, it's just such a blessing with this body that God has given us ears. And for the one that loved us so much is to hear and our eyes to see. Okay, he said, he who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Use what you have and think about the one that gave the ears to you. For you can hear everything 
with your ears. And then, as I said, that education, the doctrine, go to school to learn. It's nothing any better than an ear specialist. I send a shout out to you, specialist, ear specialist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when I read this word, it's just like cooking. Because everything that it is telling us is the breath of God. Because in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And here the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries. Now, oh my goodness, most all of us have televisions and the mysteries, even the soap operas. And at night, <laughs> you see, the detectives' mysteries. You see gun shooting and running. I, you know, I said, well, this world, our land seemed to be in uh, a, a shooting mode. The news is full mass shooting, all kind of shootings. They're even getting the guns that they use for war. Then it gives the law a job to do to try to figure it out why it happened, the mystery of it. And you can get caught up in that kind of thing. In fact, we are caught up today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The mystery of the kingdom of heaven. And we have a mystery down here on earth, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. But to them... It is not given, for whosoever have to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him sh shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not, hearing, they hear not. And what, what, what he's, the Lord is trying to tell us, we are not hearing what he's telling us about his way of doing whatever is being done. Praise God. Praise God. So in this 13th chapter, you are either hearing or you are not hearing through the parables what God is trying to help us see and tell us. And so much of our lives today is a mystery. Praise God. So we need God our Heavenly Father, our provider, to keep providing the health and the strength that is needed 
because you do need strength for this life. Good eight hours sleep every night. Good breakfast every morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me see. I want to get to the important part of this uh, 13th chapter. Therefore speak I unto them in parables. They see and see not hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. Uh-oh. There's so much in life that we don't understand really the way it is. And we need to look to the hills from which cometh our health and our strength. O oh Lord, our God, our Father in heaven. Praise God. And in them is fulfilled the prophecies of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For the people's heart is wax gloss, and their eyes are dull of hear, of, and their ears <laughs> are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Praise God. Let's at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts and should be converted. And I should heal them. Praise God. I sent a shout out to all of the doctors all over the world, especially here in San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio, the great city that for all that live in San Antonio. I ask God to bless each and every individual, all of the city officials, councilmen, mayors, attorneys, doctors, lawyers, ministers, bishops, elders. Praise God. For we've had sort of a slap in the face when it comes to healing with this COVID-19. You should do me, our Father in heaven. All he has to do is just speak the word. And in my last show, and it showed several weeks, I was saying, if we had some of these high-level ministers, doctor of divinity, if we had, we need one with every newscast so that they can let everybody know that the Bible is being fulfilled. They only hear about the trouble and the tragedies and the COVID-19 and the, now, the monkeypox. Oh, and it, it sounds horrible. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God we need you right now all over the world. You did not just say, pray 
for the good people, the people that go to church all the time. He, God said, love your enemies and do good to them that despitefully use you and persecute you. That's what the words say. We have a chance to help the media understand when they are talking about the tragedies. And then the ministers should be right there and say, but yes, the Bible is just being fulfilled. And God is trying to get our attention. You know, pain will get your attention. And I love to say this, and I've been doing it for, for years, as, as the uh, uh, servicemen are trained, and they're the one that's training them, I love to hear him say, attention! <laughs> and you know what? God is saying attention with this COVID-19. Whoever is stirring it up. 